So welcome back everyone, Triple M here. Today's video, I will be showing you how to turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a network attached storage. Now, a couple reasons you wanna do this, of course, the price. Raspberry Pi starts at about $35. So network attached storage can start anywhere from 400 all the way to infinity easily costs you $1,500. When you factor in the hard drives, it can easily run a couple thousands. So for this setup, you don't even need the four gig. You can easily get away with the two gigabyte version. So price is one reason, of course. Of course, Raspberry Pi is known for having low power consumption, guys. So stick it somewhere in the corner, attach your hard drives, and you're good to go. So today we will be using Open Media Vault to do the setup. You will need a Raspberry Pi, of course. You will need a hard drive or something that you're gonna put your media on. You also need a SD card, a micro SD card for your operating system. And if you guys haven't set up a Raspberry Pi as of yet, I've done a couple videos on this. I did one on the Plex setup, so check that out as well. Also did one on the initial startup, what you'll need to get started with a Raspberry Pi. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this setup does not require you to be in the graphical user interface like I am. You can't easily get away with SSH. You just put in your commands and you'll be good to go. But one thing you will need from your Raspberry Pi is the IP address. So luckily I am connected via ethernet. So all I need to do is hover right here and you can see my IP address is displayed right there. It's 192.168.158. You can also go into your um, terminal and you just type in IF config. You'll see some more information right here. Here's the IP address. You have your subnet mask, broadcast address. So you'll get some of the same information. And very important is that when you do a setup like this, I would strongly recommend that you set up a static IP address for your device. And how a static IP will come in handy for you guys that are new is that when you reboot your device, your IP address will be the same. That way it's easier to get to your device. So a couple ways to do this. I am gonna show you how to do it within Open Media Vault, but another way to do it, and I've done it, is you can go ahead and log into your router, I have all of my devices listed right here. Here's the Raspberry Pi that we'll be working with today. I did show up, the host name did show up on here, so good for that some people might not show up so keep that in mind but this show up right there i did go ahead and reserve it there's the dhcp reservation list it is right here and that will just ensure that no matter what the ip address for this pi is going to be the same and like i said when you reboot or you lose power whatever the case is you want that ip to remain the same that way you can easily get back to your device let's go ahead and get started i've been talking too much the so first thing let's go ahead and open up terminal let's go ahead and expand this a little bit so first we're gonna check for upgrade, just make sure everything is up to date. So we're gonna start with sudo apt get update. And now we're just gonna execute the upgrade if any are available. So sudo apt get dist upgrade. So sudo apt get dist upgrade. So everything's up and running. So what we need to do now is install Open Media Vault. And this is just one basic command as you can see there, but uh, you can pause the video if you feel like typing it, or you can check the link in this video where you can go ahead and copy and paste it in yourself. I'm gonna fast forward through this part. It is gonna take a couple minutes. All right, so it went through the installation process and it took a long time, felt like it was about 30 minutes or so. So you do need to go ahead and just give it enough time. Uh, once mine finished, it actually did a reboot by itself. So that's how I know it was finished. So let me know if you guys try this and let me know what that experience was. So once it reboots, open the web browser on a device on your network. And all we're gonna do is put in the IP address to that Raspberry Pi. So mine was 192.168.158. And here's the login screen. So the default username and password is admin and the password is open media vault. Admin and open media vault. And one thing you wanna do as soon as you log in, just to prevent anyone from accessing this area is you wanna change that default password. And to do that, you're gonna to go to general, you're gonna to go to web administrator portal. And right here, all you need to do is just 
put in a new password username will still be admin but at least you have a password to protect anyone from accessing this location so here we are in the user interface and the first thing we're going to do is go to our disk we want to make sure that our disk is set up guys because remember if this is the nas the disk is the most important part so on this you can see that i have two discs on here this is going to be my sd card this is the storage media that has the operating system on it you do not want to touch this one so the one we're looking for is this one you can see the model there you can see the capacity is 238 and that's the external hard drive that we want to set up so we're just going to highlight it and we're going to go ahead and wipe it i'm going to click yes to confirm and we're going to do a quick format all right you can see everything there is done i'm going to close it this is formatted. Now we're going to go to our file system. We're going to create. We're going to select the drive. All right, so hit the drop down. That's the correct drive right there. It's a 238 gig drive. Click OK. We're going to select the drive. And we're just going to leave it at ext4. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask you again, do you really want to format? All data will be removed. Click yes. and format it completed again. It looked like file system was created successfully. It did take about a minute or two. I'm gonna hit close. And now we're gonna select the drive. This is it right here, guys. No information on it. Click on it. And we're gonna go ahead and mount it. All right, so it is mounted. Configuration, we're gonna go ahead and just click apply right here. So now we're going to go to our share folders and we're going to click add and we're just going to give it a name. Feel free to name it whatever you think is easy to remember. I'm just going to name mine Pi for NAS and we're just going to hit the drop down and we're going to select the drive right here. So here's the path for mine. It's going to be Pi for NAS and it kind of labels it out for you. So pretty straightforward there. And also you can play with the permissions right now set to administrator rewrite user read write so everyone has access basically so i'm just going to leave this as is but feel free to um, change those permissions i'm going to hit save and now we're going to go down to smb and we're going to go ahead and turn that on so click on smb and we're just going to go ahead and flip that on and of course smb is a pretty popular file share uh, protocol so i want to go ahead and turn that on we're going to go ahead and save it and now we're going to go to shares we're going to add and we're going to hit the drop down again we're going to select the drive you can you can leave a comment here if you wanted to and for this video i'm going to go ahead and make it public but just know that you do have a guest option and you do have only guests so keep those in mind so i'm just going to go ahead and guess allowed and i'm going to go ahead and hit save Another thing that I touched on a little bit earlier is about reserving that IP address for this network attached storage. Nothing more frustrating than having your server and not having a way to get to it or it's not being available when you need to get to it. So you can go ahead and set a static path within network settings. So if you click on network here, you go to interface and it looks like my device is already here. But if you don't see anything here, you'll go ahead and click add. Select either Ethernet, Wi-Fi, whatever your network setup is. So in my case, it would have been Ethernet. And then you can go ahead and put in whatever information makes sense to you. So for mine, it's here. So let me go ahead and click edit. And the device is listed right here. If you didn't have anything on the previous screen, you would have a drop down where you can select the device. From here, you can add a comment, but we're going to set up the IPv4. And for mine and probably yours, it'll look something similar like this. So for this, we're going to switch it to static. For the IP address, mine was the 192.168.158. My mask was 255.255.255.0. And my default gateway was 192.168.1. That one so that's what I would do guys and I'll just go ahead and hit save but for me I already have it set in the router but you can go this route as well so before we do a speed test and actually mount the drive I wanted to point out a couple things for you so you can set permissions up pretty easy on this all you need to do is go to your shared folders you're gonna select the drive you're gonna select access rights management select users 
and you can see I have two users right here. I have Pi, and that has a lot of permission, but they also have Triple M, which I, I created a little bit earlier. So to add a new person, guys, all you need to do is hit the add button, select the username. So I'm just gonna make one up, test. And I'm just gonna give test a password. And we're just gonna go ahead and save it. All right, so for this to take effect, guys, you have to hit apply at the top and confirm. So if we click on test and hit privilege, and you can see you have the rights here for the permission. So you can either do read, write, read only, or no access. So completely up to you guys. So that's how you manage those guys. You select the account. You can either delete it, edit it. You can add new accounts, but if you go on privilege per account, you can go ahead and set what you want that account to be able to do. So if you guys remember earlier, I set the permissions to allow everyone to be able to view. So that means that if I connect to the server as a guest, I can view the account, but I can't make any changes. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and we're going to select apply and we're going to go ahead and map this to our computer. So we have file explorer open. We're going to go ahead and select this PC. Then we're going to go up and select map network drive and we get to give the drive a letter. So I'm just going to leave mine as Y. I'm going to hit browse. And it's going to scan my network looking for some of those locations. So right away, you can see it found the Azul box, which is another mini PC that I have running. But also the Pi 8 gig is right here, guys. So that's one way to do it. So if it doesn't pop up there, you can go ahead and put in either the IP address or the name of your server. So in this case, it will be 192.168.1.58. Browse. All right. So it will be the same server right here, Pi NAS. And another way, of course, is you can go ahead and just put in the host name, but this is relying on your DHCP server working properly. So for this, it will be Pi 8 GB. All right, so there it is right there, guys. So that's the name on my Raspberry Pi. Like I said, there's a couple ways to do it, uh, completely up to you. So I'm gonna click on that. There's the share that we created, Pi for NAS. We're gonna click OK. So this is where you actually get to specify the user account. So if I select connect using different credentials, then it'll prompt me to either put in test, triple M or pi, or if I leave this blank, it will essentially just leave it open where you can view, but you can't make any changes. So for this one, I'm gonna select connect using different credentials. I'm gonna click on finish. And now I'm just gonna select use other account and I'm just gonna use triple M. I'm gonna put in my password. And for this one, I'm just gonna select to remember. All right, so now the drive is mapped, but you can see I already have one file on here. So, so if I double click on it, so welcome to the channel, everyone. Go ahead and turn this down. You can see that's actually running with no issues, guys. This is a video coming, streaming live from the NAS. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this for a second, but I wanna go ahead and see what read write speeds we're getting. Yes, I'm connected via ethernet. This is the eight gig version I'm using. Like I said, you don't need the eight gig version to make this work properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the folder. In this case, I am gonna select the drive, which is right here, guys. Click okay. So I'm going to do sequential and it's going to go read then write. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, you can see it. Put a little folder right there, so we'll give it some time. All right, so now it's going to head over to the right speed. So those are the speeds that we're getting guys you can see we get 116 read and a 37 write speed uh, megabytes per second which are decent speed so let me know what you guys think but as far as doing anything on this guys like i said this is a 4k video right here this is the mesh network video that i have dropping in the next day or two let's go ahead and paste that in there all right you can see the the speeds right there remember that's the right speed which is about on par what we received from the crystal disk mark so about 30 37 you're going to get right read we're going to get about 115 116 all right so that's all done and let's just go ahead and play that keep in mind this is a 4k video guys So I am able to skip ahead. You can see everything looks pretty good. No issues right there actually running the file. So very impressive. 
So that's it for this video. Hopefully this helped you guys out. This is an inexpensive way to set up your network attached storage on your Raspberry Pi. Like I said, you don't need the 8 gig version. You don't need the 4 gig. This will run fine on the 2 gig version. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know. Drop it in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't done so already, check out my Plex setup on the Raspberry Pi. I also did a couple more reviews getting started. Also, I did review the Argon One case, which I think is probably the best available case out there for the Raspberry Pi. So check that video out as well. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.